Good evening, Graham Rawlins with our Friday edition of News Geelong. Perzines, fanzines and issued based zines are all part of an exciting Zines Express Yourself activity at the Geelong Regional Library. And from the world of sport, the Under-16 Dowling Shield Premier Cricket Tournament continues to test our rising stars. Also from the world of sport, Mitch Scoop Cleary will update us with the latest sporting activity in and around Geelong and the Surf Coast, while from the weather world, we'll advise you on the Geelong and Surf Coast area weather forecast expected over the next six days. The Australian Deaf Games is a pinnacle of deaf sporting events in Australia, involving up to 20 sports and held every four years. The Games attract competitors from all over Australia, New Zealand, Fiji and Samoa. Mitch Cleary reports from the Geelong Beachfront. First Deaf Games in Victoria for over 30 years. How have you found the facilities uh, down in Geelong? I think that really, they're outstanding. The venue here, the facilities have been great. I think it really justifies why the Deaf Sport Australian group have chosen Geelong as the, uh, the, the, the venue for the uh, hosting the Games. I would have to say that everything here has been outstanding. The location, it's close to everything. The people in Geelong uh, are very friendly and welcoming to us all. We just feel really honoured. Yeah. And the athletes have really enjoyed the picturesque surroundings and uh, the close proximity to the beaches and, and likewise? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think um, I've met a lot of the athletes and they've all had a great time. Um, it's, uh, we've only had it here, been here for a few days now and um, the support that we've had from um, the officials, the, uh, the representatives from the Geelong City Council and so forth have been outstanding. I think they've enjoyed the time down here as well. Um, there's been some really fantastic matches down here as well and I think um, you know, they've agreed that the, the quality of um, sport down here has been great. Yeah, what was the process Geelong had to go through to, to uh, receive the Games? Okay, so what we did is we had a bidding process. That was a few years ago. Um, and so Victoria was designated as this state to host the Games, but we still needed to select on the location. And we had a bidding process. We had a, uh, seven shortlisted areas that were going to be selected and Geelong um, you know, was much more dominant in many in, uh, areas than any of the other locations, venues, the city council was very, um, was, was very promising and the location and the facilities as well. You're the president of Deaf Sports Australia and have been for some time now, can you explain your role and uh, what your job, you do in your job? Alright, so um, it's a volunteer role, so really um, I oversee the governance of the board, uh, the Desk Board Australia that is, uh, so we need to ensure that we meet our strategic plan, the operating uh, outcomes of the board. Um, we have staff as well, so I need to um, ensure that the staff are operating as well. Uh, we are the peak organisation for deaf sports in Australia, so really it's important for us to be able to increase the awareness of deaf sports in the mainstream sports as well and try and create more participation, uh, participatory opportunities for deaf people in Australia. So that's for mainstream and also for deaf-only events. Yeah. What sort of link do you have to the Australian Paralympic team and other uh, key a government uh, issues with, around sport? Well we're funded from the Australian Sports Commission uh, so we are quite separate from the Australian Paralympics or the Paralympic venue, uh, uh, events. We work with disability athletes, yes, but Deaf Sport Australia is quite separate. We have our own, um, well we have our Deaf Olympics as well and there's a structure, so I suppose Deaf Sport Australia, uh, Deaf uh, the Deaf Games are a pathway essentially to the Deaf Olympics. Um, so we like to be more unique. We are a disability sport true, but we are a very strong cultural and linguistic uh, group that separates us very much from the Paralympics. How many athletes competing this week uh, in Geelong firstly and how many will uh, go on to the Deaf Olympics? Mm, okay, so around there's around 800 uh, registrants down here um, participating or and there's various other, um, probably making up to around 1,200 people all together that comprise of uh, interpreters and volunteers. Who's going to go to the Deaf Olympics? That's an interesting question. I suppose it really depends on the selection process. I've seen some outstanding young sports people here who I feel that really do display the qualities that are required to go. I mean, as far as beach volleyball and swimming in particular, I've seen some really impressive um, sports people. Uh, so it's a great place to identify talent down here at the Australian 
Australian Deaf Games. I think that's why it's so important because it gives deaf people the opportunity to be able to participate against other deaf people. And then it's also a great opportunity for the um, people who are spectating, um, who might be part of the selection process, to select these people of, in the future for the Deaf Olympics. Thank you, Mitch. Zines Express Yourself is a hands-on fun session giving young people a chance to express their opinion about a topic, exploring a theme or simply getting creative. Debbie Meany reports from the Geelong Regional Library. The Geelong Regional Library is holding some very interesting school holiday programs and also programs throughout the term. I spoke with Mary Ann Hyde from the library about what kids can be involved in and how they can join up. Today is all zines workshop and zines are mini magazines that the kids are creating. They can choose a topic that might be dear to their heart like the environment or climate change or they might make a fanzine so if a particular um, a rock star or someone that they are interested in they might make a fanzine but basically the kids are making their own little personal magazines and it's a bit of a movement that started in the 80s when people were making, they were wanting to get messages out in small, um, amount, like small print runs so it's really just a fun thing to come along and do. The kids are really it seems like they're really enjoying it. And it's also getting together with like-minded people that you perhaps might never have met as well. Oh, that's one of the great things about libraries is that we are a community space and kids can come here and young people can come along and actually just meet other young people who have, as you say, similar interests and uh, do some fun things and just get a bit creative and uh, have some fun during school holidays. Lewis, you've come to an interesting session today. Why did you actually come? Just to learn about how uh, animations and zines work. So if I wanted to make, say, a zombie zine, I could learn how to, like, I could cut them out of a book or I could cut them out or I could draw them by hand and let them get... I could use my imagination and put them into my story instead of using like other people's drawings and put them into the stories and yeah it's about well that's what I really want to learn about zines and most about that and well with my zine I'm doing a zombie zine about like it's a futuristic zombie zine it, you're one there you're the last person on uh, your island and there's zombies all the way around. There's all zombies everywhere. So what do you hope to do um, after the session? Do you hope to maybe do some more of these at home or in the future? I hopefully I can take it home and if I don't get to finish it in this session I can take it home and do it at home so I can finish it. And next time if I do come again with another zines thing I can bring them back and show them. Especially apples so, yeah. What about in the future? Do you see yourself doing something like this when you're older? I want in the future. I'm wanting to do a um. Oh, I want to be a games designer. So I'm yeah. trying to get into the habit of designing things and drawing them. In Geelong, this is Debbie Meany for News Geelong. Thank you, Debbie. This is News Geelong. As we go to a break and return with more news after this. Um.